James, my son, was born November 20th, 2015, and I went into labor November 19th at 7.45 in the morning. I woke up to go to the bathroom and my water broke. And that just kind of catapulted me into saying, well, my water broke, so I'm having the baby today or tomorrow. So anyways, I got dressed and first called my husband who was actually working three hours away at the time. And then I um, got dressed and decided after talking to my husband, I should go to the emergency room and check and see if my water did actually break, which I don't even know why I did that because it was a huge waste of time and caused me more anxiety than anything because I had to sit there for five hours on monitors and getting my blood pressure checked because I had high blood pressure, which um, in the end, it turned out that I did not need or take any medication for the high blood pressure. And I'm thinking I did have very minor preeclampsia, but I get anxiety really bad when it comes to anything medical. So I go to the emergency room, the lady checks to, with the little swab thing to see if my water had broke, and she said my water did not break. Well guys, it looks like we're gonna have a little guest showing in the, in the middle of nowhere. Yeah, I know, aren't you a sleepy boy? Are you sleepy? He just woke up. It's my favorite time when he wakes up, huh? Those sleepy little eyes and the sleepy hair. Yeah, so adorable. So anyways, I was at going to the ER. So I go to the ER. They say my water didn't break, so I sit there, they monitor me, they call my doctor down in the town that's like four hours away. I'm sitting here in the hospital going, thinking of like, my whole house needs to be moved. I'm in labor, I'm having this baby. My bags are not in the car, thank goodness. I put the um, car seat and all that stuff and installed it. And for some weird reason, I kept talking to my midwife about um, that I was gonna have the baby early and she was like, well, you know, you should just write down on your calendar when you think you're gonna have the baby. And I literally wrote down on the calendar the week of Thanksgiving I was going to have the baby and I thought, there's no way I can have a baby this early. He'll be too little. Like, that is way too early to have my baby. I'm laying in the hospital. I have these monitors hooked up to me. Mind you, one of my friends is actually an OBGYN there and um, she was the one that was seeing me because obviously she heard I was in the ER and I'm pregnant. She's been following me through my whole journey of getting pregnant and being pregnant and everything. Um, Zen and she's like, Jamie, I'm so mad at you. I can't believe it. You have preeclampsia. And I, if you were my patient, I would do an emergency C-section right now, or I'd put you on the helicopter and fly you to St. V's to the hospital where they can, you know, accept preterm babies. Um, and so, I was like, wow, she's being really dramatic. Like, I was actually laughing and she was getting really pissed off at me because I kept laughing. And I have this thing where I do that when I'm like really nervous or overwhelmed, I just laugh. I mean, it's like the strangest thing. I don't, I don't understand. Like, I just can't deal with, I guess, the situation or the stress. So I just kind of like laugh, try to laugh it off. Um, so anyways, um, she's like, you shouldn't be laughing. This is not funny, blah, blah, blah. So she, they, my doctor on the phone and her both said, I cannot drive. They said, you cannot drive yourself to where I needed to go, which was four hours away. My husband was three hours away. So I'm thinking in my head as she's saying this to me, I'm like, Oh, I'm getting in my car and I'm driving right now. Like as soon as I leave this hospital, I'm going straight home to pack up my bags. And that's what I did. So I left the, as I'm leaving the hospital. So they say your water didn't break. Everything's fine. I'm walking in the hallway to leave the hospital and a huge gush of water 
comes out. And I'm like, oh my God, I stop in my tracks and I'm like, ah, oh my gosh, oh my God. And so the two nurses that were um, helping me came over and they're like, oh, it's just the baby's head pressing on your bladder. It's just pee coming out. And I'm like, these people are stupid. I have never had a baby before, but is this real? Like, I felt like I was in a dream. Like, the, like I was dreaming and I was having my baby, but nobody would listen to me. I was like, no, um, th this is a lot of water. It was literally dripping down my leg. So I'm like, all right, well, apparently I'm not, my water's not broke. So they go and get me this giant pad and I go back in the little room and put this pad on and go out to my car and I'm just like squeezing my legs together because I'm like, oh my gosh, like I am walking in public and my water is leaking everywhere. So I get in my car, drive to my house, which is like two minutes away. Um, go in the house, I call my sister and my niece and I'm like, I think my water just broke and blah, blah. And I'm like telling them about it and stuff. And, I was taking pictures of, you know, what was coming out and TMI for anybody watching this. This is a labor and delivery video. So anyways, I'm st in the bathroom on the phone with my sister and I'm like, literally, I'm like, I'm not having any contractions at this point or anything. So I thought, you know what, just to be safe, I need to get to my doctor uh, down in, down in Billings. And so I... Literally, if you guys could see this bag, my husband has this huge outdoor camping backpack, like duffel bag thing. I loaded that thing up with all my stuff and lifted it into the back of my car and packed up my car with all of the stuff I needed for five days. I thought, you know, I was, you know, maximum I would be there for five days or whatever. So, um, so I get my car loaded and I'm like, I tell my husband before I even left, I was like, you got to leave right now. Excuse me. You got to leave right now and meet me at in circle, which is a town that is between where he was and where I was. And it would take him probably two and a half to three hours to get there. And so, um, I start driving and I am telling you guys, I was driving 80 miles an hour out in the middle of nowhere, literally out in the middle of nowhere. There, they call this road that goes across um, called the Cut Across and it used to be a dirt road. But it is literally, there is nothing. Anyways, I'm driving out in the middle of nowhere and I'm looking around and I'm thinking, oh my gosh, what if I have my baby by myself right here in the car? What was I thinking? Why did I do this? I am so crazy. Who, who does this? Like, what, what am, I had no, I was completely irrational. I had no idea why I decided to do that. I should have just let him take me in the helicopter. But I was like, that is so dramatic. I am not going to fly in a helicopter. Like, no, that is crazy. And I'm not riding in an ambulance on my back on a uncomfortable gurney for four hours. Like, no way. I'm just, you know, somebody's going to have to drive me or I'm driving myself. I ended up driving myself. Anyways, so I get to Circle and my husband calls me and he's like, we should just meet in Terry at the gas station because it's faster if I just go straight to Terry and let, instead of going, cut, taking the cut across and going to circle. So by the time he called me, I was in circle at this little cafe. Um, the, this cafe actually has a chiropractor and massage therapist and a cafe and like a little store in there, like a little shopping store with little gifts and baby clothes and stuff like that and toys. And I had called the chiropractor because I was working for him up in, um, up where we lived. And I asked him if his office was open because my water had broke and I was on my way to Billings. And I was like, can I use your office to go like relax and wait for my husband and lay on your table? Uh, so I go into this little cafe 
and I have a garbage bag with um, clean, dry towels. And I walk in and there's like five women in there. One of them just had a newborn baby. And I started telling them um, that my water had broke and I needed to use the bathroom that I, they were like starting to ask me all these questions about like, oh my gosh, your water broke? Like, where are you going on your, where, how long is it gonna take you to get there? And when's your husband, where's he coming from? And I'm like, I don't know anything. I was so relaxed though, I was just like, what am I gonna do? Like, why should I get upset and freak out and like cause stress to the baby? You know, like nothing's gonna change. If I have the baby here, I have the baby here. Like, I don't, I don't know. I was like, I was so calm. It was crazy. Like, they were like, well, how many kids do you have? And I was like, no, this is my first one. And they, they were all like, you're acting like you have like 10 kids. <laughs> like you've been through this a hundred times. Are you looking at the vlog? Are you looking at the vlog? Yeah. Are you watching? Yes, you came so dramatically. You were so dramatic. You decided to come at the craziest time ever, right when we were moving. So I'm in this cafe. I go to the bathroom, change my towels, because by then it was water was gushing, gushing, gushing out. And I thought, I, you know, before I left my house, I was like, I am not going back to the hospital because they will put me on a helicopter and I won't have a choice. Um, so I was like, no, I'm just, I'm just going to drive myself and meet my husband. So anyways, I'm at the cafe. I go in, change everything, put the towels in. I come out and I'm like, you know what? I haven't eaten anything yet today. I went to the hospital at like eight o'clock in the morning and they kept me there for four or five hours and I still haven't eaten. So I probably better eat before I can't eat. So I'm in there ordering a chicken sandwich with some soup and chips and stuff. And while she's making my stuff, I went and walked around the store and shopped and bought him like this cute little sheep blanket thing that he used. These women were just like, oh my gosh, like, are you having contractions? Like they're, I'm like, no, I don't feel anything yet. And so I decided, okay, well I better go. So I get in the car, call my husband. And I'm like waiting in the car for my husband. And my husband calls me and he, that's when he called me and he's like, we should just go meet at the gas station in Terry, which was 40 miles from where I was. And so, um, hi, hi, and what are you doing? What are you doing, huh? Mm, are you cutie patootie? You're just staring right at the camera. You the cutie patootie. Um, Mommy gonna get lipstick all over you? I did, I got lipstick on your face. Got lipstick on your face. Okay. Oh no, mama. Oh no, mama. So anyways, I get in my car, I leave that town, drive to Terry where my husband is. So I leave, I'm there at the gas station, the ambulance shows up and they're stopping and getting gas. So I'm like, you know, maybe I should ask them to take my blood pressure or whatever. So I get out, go over there and ask the guy, boy, was that a big mistake? Oh my gosh, if you're in labor and you're a pregnant lady, don't ever talk to people that are in an ambulance. They freak out. These, this guy, like his eyes got huge and he's like, oh my God, your water broke and he went crazy. And so he gets on his thing and starts calling these other paramedics to come over. And I'm like, oh my God, don't do that. Don't do that. What are you doing? Like. No, I'm just gonna get to this town right over here and I'm gonna get checked up, I promise. And so the guy, anyways, these two other paramedics come and they like take my blood pressure, blah, blah, blah. And uh, they were like, so what are you, where are you going? And I was like, well, I'm on my way to Billings. And they were like, well, you should stop at Holy Rosary in this little town before you get to Billings, Miles City. Yeah. Are you telling them? Are you telling them about how you came into the world? Yeah, it was so dramatic. It was so dramatic. Uh-huh, it was. You said, I'm going to come today. Yes, I want to come today, Mama. Mwah. The ambulance, the paramedics come, they check me out. They're like, oh my gosh, you should really stop at Holy Rosary. And so I thought, okay, I'll stop at this other hospital. I'm like, this is going to be a big waste of time. I, and I, it was. I shouldn't have stopped there. Plus, it made my blood pressure go up even more because the doctor there was annoying me really bad. Mind you, I had a midwife, and I was planning on having 
I was planning on having a home water birth at a birth center, um, but my insurance ended up not covering um, covering it if I didn't have it in a certified birth center, and she didn't have a certified birth center, and the nearest one was seven hours away in the middle of winter. So I was like, yeah, no, I can't do that. So anyways, um, I get really nervous when I'm around doctors and people wanting to do stuff to me that I don't want to be done. Like I just, I'm really funny when I'm in pain. I just like to be left alone and not talk to and stuff like that. So, um, I get to this hospital. We, I meet my husband. My husband shows up, the ambulance is sitting there and there's these paramedics around my car and my husband's like freaking out. He thinks I'm like having the baby right there at the gas station. I'm like, no, it's fine. Okay, let's go, let's go, let's go. So he gets in the car with me. I get in the passenger seat and uh, my water is still gushing, like puddles of water. I was like, is there like, is how much water is in there? Like, it was a lot. I had a garbage bag filled with towels that were soaked. So I'm like, when is this gonna stop? Holy cow. Get in the car, we're hauling butt to get there. And the paramedics called ahead of time and told them that I was on my way and that I was just coming to get Ow! checked in. So we get there, I go upstairs, they get me monitored. The baby's fine, he's perfectly fine. But my blood pressure was 180 to over like 96 and they freaked out they were like you're gonna have a seizure or a stroke right now and I was like what no I'm fine and so I keep tell the doctor like you know okay well we're just gonna go I'm gonna drive we gotta finish driving and so um, they're like we really don't recommend that you leave or not be around any medical personnel with blood pressure this high because you can have a stroke or a seizure, you could die. And so then that freaked my husband out and he did not want to be driving in the car with me and have me have a seizure. And I did not want to take a helicopter because then I would get there way before my husband. And so I chose to take an ambulance and before I chose to take the ambulance, it was probably like a whole two and a half hour spiel of this doctor trying to give me this magnesium sulfate stuff to lower my blood pressure. And I was like telling the guy, I'm like, no, you're the one giving me anxiety. If you would just leave me alone and I would just hurry up and leave, I would be just fine. Yeah. Yeah. Are we talking about your story? We talking about your story? Yeah. So anyways, I'm telling this doctor he's annoying me. And he wants to check me and like all this stuff before we leave. And I'm like, no, 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 no. Like to everything. And eventually my husband kind of, and I kind of got in this little spat because they were all so worried. And I totally get it why they would be worried. Obviously that's really high blood pressure. And, but I knew I had anxiety really bad. Like my heart was palpating. I mean, I'm nervous. Like, plus everything that was going on, we're moving, like all of this stuff. And I mean, I was stressed out. My blood pressure obviously should be high, you know? So we just decided we, I'm not taking the blood pressure medicine because I knew that I had anxiety and that I didn't have real, real high blood pressure. And that if I took that medicine, I'd end up having an emergency C-section. It would affect his heart, my heart, like everything. I was like, no, I'm not taking that stuff. So anyways, long story short, I decided to take the ambulance. So we get in the ambulance, which took forever. They wouldn't even let me walk down there. They brought the gurney all the way up to the labor and delivery floor and strapped me to the gurney and gurneyed me all the way down. I'm like, I can walk to the ambulance and lay on the gurney. Like I'm not crippled. Oh my gosh, I just was gonna drive four hours. I loaded that huge bag in the back of my car. I'm like, what's wrong with these people? So anyways, I get in the ambulance, we start going. We're going about 80 miles an hour is the speed limit. We're going about 80. Okay, so I was at us leaving the one hospital, going to the other hospital, checked in, blah, 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 all that stuff. Um, Found out I was six and a half centimeters by the time I got there. 
And so we just basically hung out and I labored. So I ended up laboring and did not end up going into the bathtub or anything like that. I just labored in my bed and on my bouncy ball and um, walked around and stuff like that. But my labor was going so fast. I just, there wasn't really a lot I could do to like make the pain less. I ended up um, waiting and waiting and waiting until I had actually been pushing for five hours. I was completely dilated by like nine o'clock, 10 o'clock. I was 10 centimeters and um, you know, they said, okay, we'll just have you start pushing in a little bit or whatever. And um, I was already like kind of grunty pushing, but I wasn't really telling them that I was, you know, that I did that. So, um, what, what? So I um, started pushing, it ended up being five hours of pushing. And so it was five hours later. Um, so um, I ended up having them the next day at 11.08, but I started, I'm pretty sure I started pushing obviously, um, you know, at um, like five o'clock. So I had labored like all from all day from except for, you know, with no contractions, but my water broke at 745 on the 19th and I didn't have them till um, the next day at 11 o'clock in the morning. So I labored all day, all night, and then until the morning of the 20th. So um, I ended up pushing for five hours and everything was fine. The baby's heart rate was okay and everything. And normally they'd never let anybody push that long, but I had a midwife and doulas and everything. So they were, as long as the baby was okay, they, everything was fine. Like they were okay with it and whatever. And as long as I wasn't getting, I was obviously starting to get exhausted. I would just pray and just say, God, give me strength for one more hour one more hour, one more hour. And it was right at the very end, um, literally like 30 minutes before he was born, the midwife was like, we need to consult with this MD that's here because, you know, he's not moving, nothing's happening, and we think his head's coming out. Oh my goodness. He was coming out right here on this part of his head instead of the center. I finally decided after like three and a half hours of pushing, okay, you can let this doctor come in. You know, my midwife is like, he's really awesome. He's amazing, like all this stuff. And so I said, okay, he can come in. So anyways, um, I decided that once the MD came in and they were gonna have to do something to me that I don't think I could handle the pain, I decided to get the epidural. And so they came in, did the epidural. It was literally like 10 minutes, it was done with. So. They get the epidural in, it gets going or whatever, but I feel like the epidural made it worse <laughs> because it felt like all my pain was concentrated in this one little strip that I could still feel that was wrapping around my side and down. It, I don't know, it was just totally crazy. Doctor started doing his thing with his hands and he, they did realize the baby was coming out. It was on this side. His neck is, he does have a little bit of torticollis from it. But um, I think the way he was in my pelvis too uh, at the end of my pregnancy caused part of that. But um, so the doctor started doing some maneuvering where I'm just gonna kind of like, this is so weird to like talk about. <laughs> he puts his hands in and he starts kind of like feeling around to see like how, which way the baby's head is. He was facing my right hip. Um, the doctor slowly started to like kind of push his head and turn it and I'm telling you um, just popping noises and are you hurting my baby like what's going on like if it has anything to do with me I'm fine with that like whatever but it was um the baby finally started to move and they were like okay this is gonna work so, um, because they, the doctor had said, I don't want to give you a C-section because if I did, I'd have to cut you vertically 
and because the baby is so low and like right there he would have to use a vacuum to get him out anyways through the c-section and he was like that would just be a terrible thing the baby would have a really rough delivery and with him being four weeks early so he came out and he never cried never not one time never cried they didn't make him cry they never suctioned him he was perfect the whole NICU team was in there uh, just in case you know he had any breathing problems or anything like that but I don't talk about like how I was four weeks early and I wasn't I don't, I don't know why I didn't think about that something could be wrong or anything like that I did had no worries about like something would be wrong with him um, until he was born and I saw how small he was he was so tiny he was five pounds eight ounces and he was like 18 and a half inches long and um, the doctor did say that uh, my my um, pediatrician did say he did have a big head like after I had you know had him and went to the doctor and stuff like that she's like yeah his proportions he does kind of have a big head and if he would have been full term she said I probably would have had a c-section because he has a big head but for being so tiny thank goodness he was early and was tiny and was healthy and everything like that but and so um, meanwhile also I'll recap you guys on that my blood pressure was perfect through the whole thing when I had got in the ambulance and left that one hospital where my blood pressure was 182 over 96 my blood pressure went down to 146 over like 62 and it just proves that I did have very minor high blood pressure but it was the anxiety blood pressure actually stayed high after I had the baby so I ended up staying in the hospital for five days they had to wanted to monitor him and keep him in there he eventually had to go under the lights um, but as in my care and everything after the baby the worst part about my delivery was that I broke my tailbone and I don't know if anybody <laughs> watching this has experienced that before not having a baby just broke your tailbone it is painful when you break your tailbone after you have a baby and you have to sit up in bed and breastfeed it was terrible like the worst part of having a baby is my broken tailbone it still hurts that was pretty much the gist of what happened the sad part was that my husband had to move our entire house and all the plans we had for movers and all this stuff got all messed up and hey, say hello say hello say hello hi i'm gonna get you i'm gonna get you i'm gonna get you huh so we stayed in the hospital for five days, went home, and we had a house filled with boxes. And his nursery was not set up. All of his stuff was in boxes. Brand new furniture, his crib, his dresser, everything was still in the boxes. I had all of his clothes actually, and all of my baby stuff were in Tupperware um, containers, and those were all in his room. So. Anyways, if you guys want to know anything else, this was a video request from one of my subscribers. Um, and also, this is a good, um, that was, that's it for my labor and delivery. It's so amazing. James is four months old now, and he is already rolling over from his back to his front and rolling all over the place and grabs things and... I can't believe it. It's going by so fast. But we'll see you guys next.